So when we're thinking about Amazon, it's all too easy, isn't it? We lift out our phone, we log in, we find what we want, let's get a projector, we hit send, and then what we end up with is this magic delivery capability. But there's much more to it. The ability for Amazon to be able to deliver is a core capability of the business and it places its supply chain at the very heart of the operation. And that's what we want to delve into now. So Amazon is a fantastic example of a business operating in the supply chain space. And one of the things that I want to reflect upon are three core reasons why I believe that to be the case. In one area, we have unprecedented scale. In the next area, we have hyperspeed. And in the final area is continuous innovation. But I want to take each in turn. I'd like to look at unprecedented scale first. When we think about unprecedented scale, we're often left measuring things. We're talking about the size of buildings. We're talking about the number of vehicles, the number of people that an organization employs. But there's much, much more to it. Amazon itself has, yes, more than 250 million unique products represented at 450 million at the SKU level, but it is a customer of global shipping companies such as Merz, Kuhn and Agel, Crowley. And like many, it doesn't own that global model. So therefore it is dependent upon coordination, collaboration with those businesses to move volume towards its markets. When it gets to the middle mile, it gets even more complicated. Amazon itself, of course, doesn't own its entirety of its middle mile operations. It has many of its own facilities. It has its own Amazon transportation service. But at the same time, it does rely upon third party logistics providers to own and operate facilities. And it is dependent upon carriers to move volume around that network. When it gets to the last mile, it gets even more complicated. Because now, of course, depending upon which market we're operating in, Amazon is going to be using national postal services. And that could be as far arranged as Deutsche Post to Royal Mail. It is also dependent upon its own logistics provision for Amazon Logistics, Amazon Excel, to move volume out to customers. But in addition to that, it is using franchise capabilities such as delivery service partner organizations, and it is also using contracted in third-party logistics support with the likes of UPS. The unprecedented scale of Amazon, as, as I see it, is about communication. It's about collaboration. It's about coordination. And it is through those efforts that Amazon is able to work at the scale that it does. The next area that's really interesting is the notion of hyperspeed. Now, when we start thinking about hyperspeed, there are several dimensions to this. In one aspect, we have that in terms of technology. So we think about the 29 million transactions per second over the Amazon.com website, and we think, yep, bang, there's hyperspeed. But if we step back from that, Amazon itself is but one customer of Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is looking after the likes of Apple. It's looking after many of the large money exchanges in the world. It's looking after some of the biggest banks in the world. It's looking after NASA and many other agencies. Video streaming capabilities with the likes of Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and others. And therefore, all of that volume is happening at speed and scale. So Amazon becomes but one customer of Amazon Web Services. But that's really one type of speed. The speed that really matters and comes immediately to mind when we think about Amazon is delivery. And when people are thinking about delivery, they think, you know, you're going to pick up your phone, you're going to search into Amazon.com, you're going to select what you want, in this case, one times projector, you're going to hit send, and you have a reasonable expectation that these things are going to arrive at relative speed so that you can actually get it done. Ta-da! And if you're able to get to that level of speed, then Amazon is in a great place. But what is the genuinely fastest time that Amazon is able to put a product into the hand of a customer? In those instances, let's take an example. We're gonna go right back to the height of the pandemic. And at the height of the pandemic, we have all sorts of operational constraints. But not only that, we have all sorts of challenges about moving volume around our customer base. So we're heavily constrained. So thinking about that heavy constraints, then we want to go into our biggest market, which is the US. So in the biggest market, with all of these constraints, in the busiest quarter in Q4, what is the fastest time that Amazon was able to put a product into the hand of a customer? When I ask that question, speaking to many of the customers that we interact with, they will start with two days, then you drop to a day, and on occasion, you will get people into intraday operations. But if I tell you that the fastest time that Amazon was able to achieve that amidst all of those constraints 
was 29 minutes and 54 seconds. It's eye-opening, the speed. But of course, Amazon isn't always the fastest. There are other companies that are much, much faster um, than Amazon in delivering. But those companies tend not to be operating at the scale of Amazon with the range of products. The third dimension of hyperspeed, though, matters a great deal. So how can you actually get to sub-hour delivery when you have many products? Well, the first thing that's true is that Amazon is not going to be moving a washing machine across Manhattan in 29 minutes and 54 seconds anytime soon. So that means that of the 250 million unique products that Amazon has, there's only a proportion of those that could be delivered within an hour. And of those products that could be delivered within an hour, there's only a smaller proportion of those products that customers will value being delivered within an hour. And there's also a smaller portion thereof where the actual economics work to be able to deliver it within an hour. So what we're actually starting to see is we're starting to see AI and ML tools being used in order to be able to segregate the inventory down so that we know what proportion of the inventory could be delivered within an hour. But there's more than that. To deliver within an hour, we have to be able to process the customer order from point of order. We have to be able to uh, clear the credit card payment. We have to be able to allocate it to the appropriate fulfillment capability. We have to be able to pick the order, pack the order, and physically give the order to the customer. And all of that seamlessly. So then I'm left with another question. At what point is it that Amazon will tell you when the order will be delivered? Meaning, when does Amazon make the promise to you? Is it after you've ordered or before you've ordered? So when I think about that question, it's clear that Amazon makes the promise upfront because I'm not necessarily prepared to wait on the off chance that it will be delivered within the hour. So if I'm told upfront that it's going to be delivered within the hour, that means that Amazon is running many simulations around the ability to move that volume to me and therefore is making predictions on its supply chain's ability to be able to meet my emerging demand. And it's doing all of that before I've even hit send. So when we talk about hyperspeed, I hope you can see that the real underpinning of hyperspeed is the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning at scale and the mass automation of all of the various processes necessary to be able to move volume from one place to another at scale. The final area is continuous innovation. When I think about continuous innovation, what I'm often left reflecting upon though are those things that you would walk right by. So let's think about that for a moment. If you go to the Amazon Buy Box as an example, and you put in inflatable kayak as something that you want to buy, the very first thing that Amazon's going to do is they offer you some paddles so you don't get stuck up the creek without them. But it's more than that. What Amazon has actually done, which is very clever, it has recognized that you did not want an inflatable kayak. You might have ordered one, you might have thought that's what you wanted, but it's not. What you actually wanted to do was to spend time on the water with your family. And if you want to spend time on the water with your family and you're going to order an inflatable kayak, then you're going to need a pump, you're going to need oars, you're going to need some way of stopping the oars getting lost in the water, you're going to need a little bag to put your phone in so that it doesn't get lost in the water, etc. In other words, Amazon is bringing together a whole range of products that are actually going to enable you to be able to make use of that thing that you wanted to purchase. So if you put that into your context in your environment, we're working a lot with remote mining operations, oil and gas companies, etc. So if we take an example of an engineer that is working in a remote mining operation, let's say for argument's sake in, in Canada, if the engineer goes ahead and orders an oil in order to do an oil replacement, then what we recognize is the engineer doesn't want oil. They want that vehicle serviced and they want that vehicle operational. More often than not, when you change the oil, you also change the filter. And if you change the filter, you need a special oil filter changing tool. You need a drip bag to collect the old oil. You need a drip tray to stop the oil becoming a challenge within the environment. If all of those things are true, then we're going to offer the engineer all of that up front so that the engineer can then have what they require to do the job first time round. So that's one idea of continuous innovation that sits within the Amazon family of ideas. Thank you for exploring with us today. We were looking at Amazon as a case study, and I hope you agree with me that unprecedented scale, hyperspeed, and continuous innovation are some of the core reasons why Amazon is such a fantastic example of supply chain management. If you agree, then please hit the like button and it'll be a privilege to have you subscribe to the channel so that we can continue bringing great content to you. Also, if you have any comments, go ahead, stick them in the comments box and I'll be sure to respond. Thank you.